What's going to be coming out in WWDC 2023? Let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to this video. I'm gonna to try to keep it as short as I can here. So WWDC 2023, exactly one month out, maybe a little bit less than a month out, what do we know? We know a couple of things. So if you're excited about Max, we're gonna get a little excitement there, but there's one thing, now stay tuned for this. At the very end of this video, or at least at the complete end, I'm gonna share with you something that I think is the most exciting piece of WWDC 2023. And it's gonna maybe be a game changer with the way we consume media, sporting events, things like that. So let's talk about that in a second. First of all, let's get into the Mac. So this is everything we know about DC, you know, basically WWDC 2023. Let's get into it. All right, so first of all, are there any Macs coming out? Well, we know one thing. We know that 15-inch MacBook Air, we, we don't know, it's a rumor, we think it's coming out, but we th we're pretty pretty sure it's gonna be coming out here, right? So it's gonna, you know, let me just show you a couple little pictures here. It's gonna be very similar. It's gonna be the same design as the 13-inch right now. Um, and you can see it right here in this picture. This is from, I believe, let me see here, Tom's Guide. So anyways, it's gonna look very similar to that, all right? It's gonna have the M2 chip. It's going to, let me just see here, I'll go back over here. It's gonna be basically 15.5 inches. It's gonna have an eight core and a 10 core GPU option, we think. So overall, we all know it's coming. The price is gonna be about $14.99, give or take maybe 150 bucks, somewhere in there. So $14.99, more expensive than 13 for sure. And then obviously, like I said, the M2 chip inside, not the M3. So I'm not crazy excited about that, even though I might pick one up just to review and stuff. Um, just because the 13 inches are out there, 13.3 or whatever they are, and they're fine. So it's going to be, you know, obviously better to have more real estate, but let's not talk about that. All right, next thing I want to talk about is the Mac Pro. So we found out that it's probably, according to Mark Gurman, not coming out this year, maybe next year or maybe later this year. So that's a no-go, they think, in this event, right? And then finally, the IMAX. And the IMAX, they don't think are coming out either, which is kind of a big disappointment. They think it's gonna be later this year. They're gonna be coming out with the M3s, not the M2s. Again, this is Mark Gurman, it's a rumor, but I mean, we're getting closer and closer. They see a lot of things coming out as far as serial numbers and stuff, and they don't think they're coming out. So for the Macs, that's really it. Now there's three more things I wanna talk about that are gonna be the things coming out here. Two of them are not the most exciting, but then I'm gonna to get to that one that I think could be a game changer. All right, the first thing here that again is not the most exciting, for some it might be, iOS 17 upgrade, all right? So they're gonna be upgrading iOS 17 with announcements on what that is. It says dedicated journaling app they're gonna come out with for, for this. If you wanna do journaling and basically tracking and recording daily activities, that's gonna be included. Updated control center features, more functionality for the dynamic island, so you're gonna get some more functions there. More interactive widgets. This is gonna be a main one. There's gonna be more interactive widgets on iOS 17, just because they're trying to compete more with Google and all those type of widgets, so expect that, which is kind of nice. Health app to expand to the iPad, that's gonna be something nice. Health tracking features and vision changes they're gonna to add to it, which is a little unusual for me. Uh, more streamlined and intuitive wallet app. Manual adjustments for the uh, app library folders. And then Apple, you know, there's a whole bunch of other things, but basically they're just minor, right? So that's not that exciting, right? Let's keep going. The Watch OS 10, there's gonna be an upgrade here, right? Not the most exciting, I don't even have a watch, but let's just talk about it for a second. A new widget system will make it easier to get key information on the Apple Watch without the need to open an app. Widgets will be scrollable and will allow glances, activity tracking, weather, calendar, appointments, and more. So that's one good feature. Just two more it's listing right here. Buttons like the crown, the digital crown will be more customizable, so you can go ahead and do that. Users will be able to choose if they have a press options or a scroll options. Just gonna make it more configurable, all right? And then the third thing here is it says Apple could overhaul the actual, the entire watch screen in some way to make it kind of more competitive or at least make it seem like there's a change even though there's not. So they're gonna have more design changes on the, on the face, all right? Not too important. Now let's get into this cool thing. Now, as soon as I say this, you're gonna run away, and I don't want you to, because listen to what I'm gonna say here. So first of all, they're gonna come out with this mixed reality headset, all right? It's gonna start like 2,000, 2,500 bucks, number one. We're not all gonna buy it right away, but th I think they're selling this to developers, and they're only gonna, you know, they're gonna get this thing going, and the next iteration is gonna be the one you want. But just stay tuned here for a second, all right? So I'll show you some pictures as I'm talking about this, and, uh, but again, that price is gonna be a huge thing. Plus it's gonna have a battery that looks like kind of almost like a purse. It, it's not gonna be connected to the actual goggles. That's another big problem. I think they have to work that out. But anyways, 
It's gonna have basically this headset, and then I'll get to the whole thing at the end of here. It's gonna have two 4K micro LED displays, 8K total Sony, it says total Sony resolution. 8K on a headset like this, think about that for a second. It's gonna have dozens of cameras that will be basically be included for everything like mapping the environment, basically to facial expressions, hand gestures. So I don't know if I want that either. That's something that'll be cool, but again, at the end of the day, if it's mapping my entire bedroom or something, a little unusual, right? All right. Iris scanning can be used for authentication. That's kind of cool, obviously. Facial expression tracking, so if you're playing games and you smile, it can kind of do the faces and stuff like that. Kind of cool. Augmented reality and virtual reality capabilities basically will both be available. That's pretty nice. It's gonna have M2 chips in it, it says right here. So it's gonna be basically a high-end processor for high-end type stuff. Now, rumors suggest that it can be ultra thin. Again, I'll show you some designs here. Uh, there's going to be air typing support, so you can type in the air and actually type things into like documents and applications and stuff. It's going to be have a whole bunch of applications, and it's going to be used. It says for basically optimized for gaming, video conferencing, fitness, and consuming media. All right, let's take a step back. So consuming media, this is the part I want to talk about. Now, obviously, I think Apple's putting this out there right now at that bigger price. No one's going to really want to pick this up. But except for one reason, but it's gonna get lower. This is just to get in people, developers in and all that stuff started. But think about this for a second. Let's go over here. So back in 2020, if you look at this article here, Apple buys Next VR. Right? It's a company, they bought, they bought it for maybe $200 million or something. Well, Next VR, this is 2020. They were like the number one company that actually provided sports and recreation stuff like music videos, or not music videos, but concerts in virtual, like with the virtual reality headset. So you put these things on, and you can look all around the sporting event. You can look behind you, in front of you. You can get tickets in the front row, the last row. You can ha be, have any experience you want in these environments with these headphones, right? They did a really good job in 2019, 2020. Apple bought them. Now let's think about this for a second. Apple wants to get into media, right? They want to be able to be the biggest consumption company because that's where the money is. Can you imagine Apple with all of its great music and as far as how it can actually, just the level of, of you know, 8K and then the sound and everything else built into this thing, you being able to actually buy courtside tickets you know, at a Bulls game or something or watching a Hawks game, you know, I'm from Chicago, so <laughs> sorry to be biased there, um, things like that, or watching your favorite artist in concert, right? How much do you pay, instead of driving, fighting people, getting in fist fights and stuff, versus just sitting in your room and actually being able to look around at people around you, being able to look at all the people on the stage and listening to it like in super high fidelity sound, would this be worth 2,500 bucks, right? Probably not for most people, but when you get the next iteration coming out around 1,000 bucks or so, and that's where I think it'll be, that's where they got you. I think this is where Apple's going with this. Of course, it's gonna be used for all types of mapping and all industry at first. I mean, industries are gonna be using this thing to do you know, training on certain things like doctors and everything else that you have to use your hands on and stuff like that where it's too expensive, maybe fighter pilots, everything like that. But that's gonna be the expensive side and the software there will be way too expensive. But where Apple's gonna make its money on the consumer side is what I just told you. It's gonna basically be on the media consumption. And I think it's gonna be sporting events and I think it's gonna be concerts. And it's gonna be, you're sitting in the front row watching everything around you as if you were sitting at the concert, but you're sitting at home. And I think that's something that people will pay for. It's not only gonna make them money on the headsets, they don't even care about that. In fact, they might even give them away at that point. It's gonna be the concert tickets and the tickets to like the sporting events that they would never have gotten because you can't have the physical amount of people at the stadium, but you can buy that seat through the glasses and that's where the money is. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is kind of what I'm thinking and I'm sticking to it. Just a suggestion out there. And we will talk to you soon. That's all they have out for WWDC 2023. So let me know if I hit it or if I'm way off. I'll talk to you soon. And I do have some new product reviews coming out and all that stuff like I normally do. So we'll get those hopefully in a couple days. Peace.